And welcome inside the WOSN studios. Mark Shine is here. I'm Matt Finkel. Time for Mark's Madness. The postseason rolls along. Lots of results to get to, so let's jump right in. We're going to start with the boys in Division yep. One. Lima Senior, they're going to play Finley, third time of the season at Liberty Benton coming up on Thursday night. Yeah, they've won twice, and although you say, well, you know, third time's a tough thing, and it is a third time to play a team, but the way the Spartans have won, that also leads some, some area of concern. They were down 15-7 in the first game, come back and won it rather handily. In the second game, they're ahead big. Finley makes a run. The Spartans win by seven. So the, the Finley Trojans have proven that they can play at least in spurts with Lima Senior. The question is whether they can do it for a full 32 minutes or not. Lima Senior struggled a little in their win oh. over Fremont. Does that worry you going into this matchup? Uh, it always is a concern in the tournament, Matt. I think that's something you have to think about. And, of course, uh, you know, Pugsy didn't play in the game. He was ill, and he's back and supposedly playing this week. So I, I think the Spartans with a full complement will be better. They will need to be against Finley. Moving to D2 now, you called it jokingly the Salina <laughs> Invitational. There's a yeah. lot of WBL teams yeah. in this district. We've got four left. Salina, Elida, Wapak, St. Mary's. Salina's got to be the favorite to come out of this district, but these teams know each other so well that you never really know what's going to happen until they get out on the court. Yeah, I would agree with that, Matt. You know, you look at that situation where, you know, we played these guys before. I know Salina joking called the Salina Invitational because they defeated all three of these teams, although close games in two of them, Elida was kind of a blowout. I think the St. Mary's Wapak game is a really interesting game to start that particular bracket out. Um, Zara only, did, only scored uh, two points. Jay didn't score at all in the first game for St. Mary's. If they get those guys going a little bit, I know Zara's had some illness situations. If they get those guys going, I think that's a closer game with Wapak this particular time. St. Mary's is still, or excuse me, Salina is still the favorite. St. Mary's defeated Shawnee in overtime to yep. get here. That was a good game. We got to go back a couple of days. Feels like, you know, it, it just <laughs> yeah. happened, but it feels like right. it was so long ago because the results are coming at such a fast and furious pace this time of year. Also, Salina and Wapak won easily. Elida defeated Bath, and that, and that was an interesting game as well over at Lima Senior. A kind of a low scoring game. Neither team could get a whole lot of flow offensively. Uh, Elida had just lost to Bath at the end of the regular season, so that was kind of a difficult situation, I think, for the Wildcats again to try to uh, win a game for the third particular time. Since they'd also won in the, uh, the tip-off classic over Elida. Elida does prevail. Now they get to play Salina again, which they struggle with in the regular season ending. Yeah, it seems to be a theme, playing, beating the team yeah. three times. We talk about it's not easy. Some teams are being faced with that challenge again. Staying in Division Two, Defiance plays Wasion up in Toledo yep. on Wednesday. Do you think we're still headed for that Salina Defiance regional? Two things to think about. First of all, the Defiance Bulldogs will play Wasion, a team they've already defeated by 28 in the regular season. Uh, tournament game will probably be a much closer situation than that, but certainly Defiance will be favored there. Then Toledo Scott's waiting out there, and Scott is a team when you first think about it, you say, well, that's an up and down full court tempo team. Not really. They, although they're one 19 basketball games, they're more of a slow, uh, methodical, they play solid defense, and they try to beat you by scoring into the 50s. That, that will be something that will help Defiance a little bit, I think, rather than playing a real up tempo, fast paced, paced game. But I think the Defiance Bulldogs will have to get by Salina Bulldogs or the Scott Bulldogs to win that one. And then they might then they yeah. might match up with the Salina Bulldogs, Salina Bulldogs in the regional yeah, so semis. A lot of Bulldogs. A lot of Bulldogs, <laughs> uh, a lot of Bulldogs yeah. in that district and, and region if they right. get that far. But that should be interesting to see how that one plays out. Yep. Let's move to Division Three now. Interesting scenario at ONU. We've got LCC and St. Henry. Those are the two favorites, and assuming they meet in the district final. But before they get there, LCC has to beat Coldwater, and St. Henry has to beat Liberty Benton. I don't think that's an easy task for either team. Uh, I think that the LCC, if, when they got Trey Cobbs back this week, he's supposed to be healthy after missing the, their first tournament game, which they obviously won very easily. Um, I, I would think that that will be a difference maker for them. They'll, their their up-tempo game will get out and give Coldwater some fits going up and down the floor. Their defensive pressure will be good. If Coldwater can hold the pace down and get the ball inside, that will help them. I think LCC is the favorite. Likewise, I think that this will be a St. Henry team that will really show up in full force, and I think they will get LB and give us the game we've all been looking at for a long, long time. And obviously the only reason I say that LCC and St. Henry are the favorites are because they're one and two in the district. Exactly. But I don't think we can discount these other teams. Coldwater defeated Delphus Jefferson in a game which they really shut Trey Smith down. Yeah. He did become the school's all-time leading scorer in the game on a free throw, but they really quieted him down in, in a big game. And people forget a little bit about Coldwater and the fact that the MAC was very good this year. A lot of very high-quality teams in the MAC this year, and Coldwater was right there down towards the end. I think they ended up 6-3 and three in conference play. They've acquitted themselves very well. Obviously, the late start from football and, and some of those things have caused problems for them through the course of the season. Coldwater will be a good matchup for the Thunderbirds. I just think the quickness and the ability to get out and make things happen in transition will favor the Thunderbirds. 
Elsewhere in Division Three, Versailles season came to an end last night against Cincinnati Purcell. Kyle Arn scored 33 points in the win, matching his jersey number. Yep. But his season and his high school career comes to an end. Next time we see him play basketball, will be at Michigan State. Yeah, he had 33 that night. 33 of his team's 54. So obviously he got a lot of points, but his teammates weren't able to give a lot with him to help him through. This is a good Cincinnati Purcell team. Both of those teams were three seeds, so they're kind of an even matchup coming into that particular game. And tough to see Kyle Arns graduate. He's one of those guys we we'll all like to see play. Well, maybe we'll be catching him in the Big Ten tournament like yeah. we're all watching Dakota Mathias right. starting for Purdue in the Big Ten. I wouldn't be surprised to see Arns make an impact at Michigan State right away. Well, certainly Michigan State's program is the type where he can step in and be a contributor. They kind of a willingness to accept everybody as a part of their program. And once you've proven you can compete and help them, you'll see a much more physically strong player, I would bet, because their weight room is pretty important up, up at Michigan State. Once he gets that going, I think he can contribute there. Looking forward to see what he yep. can do. In Division Four, Wayne Trace moved on, a win over Antwerp. Now they'll face Edgerton in the district finals on Friday. Wayne Trace really hasn't been challenged yet. That's right, and they've, they've defeated Edgerton by 12 in the regular season. That was back in the middle part of January. Um, obviously, when they play well and they get out in transition, they th shoot three balls well. Their full court trap game is good for Wayne Trace. We've talked about that multiple times, how good the two lenders play that, how well they shoot the ball from the three-point line. They will be favored against Edgerton and a favorite to get to the regionals. Elsewhere in D4, Rushi and Jackson Center are both into their yep. district finals in their respective Dayton districts. Jackson Center defeated Fort Lormy. Yeah, which they've done now three times in the course of the season. And we had a big matchup we thought we were going to see in the regular season. And then uh, Devin Brown wasn't able to play due to illness. Jackson Center won that one rather easily. But Jackson Center able to defeat a team three times in, re in the course of the season. And then great action in D4 last night. <laughs> two games at Elida, yep. two games at Wapak. We'll get to the games that you call that Wapak. Yep. First, let's start at Elida. These are games that you can see tonight on WOSN, taping this Wednesday afternoon. So Wednesday evening, you'll be able to watch these. First one, Delphi St. John's defeats Lipset. Yeah, and I think that was something we kind of thought might happen because St. John's was so good defensively throughout the course of the year, and that seems to just be getting better. In the tournament, they've given up, what, 39 a couple of times and 33 Great or whatever defense. it is. So, you know, their, their defense has just been outstanding for St. John's. I think the other key is, as I've watched them lately, they're starting a little more consistent scoring out of Conley inside. Odin Weller scored well from all year. Grothaus has scored well for them all year. and But now I think they're getting something out of Conley inside. When that happens, that makes them good. Grove defeats Miller City yep. by 10. Derbyshire goes over a thousand career points, scores 21, and for, don't for, don't forget he was the NWC yep. NPCL Player of the Year. Player of the year in two now conference. we've got Grove versus Delphi St. John's. That's going to be a good one. It really will. One of bet it's not a low-scoring basketball game. Both teams like to take care of the basketball. Both teams have solid defensive players. I'll really be interested to see how Derbyshire plays against the St. John's team, which will be trying to do everything they can to take him out. And since a team like St. John's hangs their hat on playing defense, that's an interesting matchup. So now let's get to your games at Wapak. There are yeah. two good ones. First one really was great. Marion Local defeats New Bremen yep. in a very close contest. That really was. And, and you know, when you look at that game and how it started out, the, the Marion Local Flyers were on top 14 to 3. And you're thinking, okay, here comes the runaway. But if you look at each of the quarter scores after that, New Bremen outscored Marion Local in each of the final three quarters. Just not enough to get over the hump after that big start by the Flyers. And then how about Perry and Spencerville in the nightcap there? Spencerville advances on. Great season for the Commodores, yep. but a little too much from the Bearcats last night. Uh, two things. I think you hit that right on the, on the head, Matt. The, the Bearcats have a lot of balance offensively. Golke scored for a while, and Pritchard got a couple of baskets, and Corso had a big night for them, both offensively and defensively. It's had a lot of different balance, and on the other side, uh, Perry played through foul trouble the whole night long. Uh, Jacoby Lane Harvey was in foul trouble in and out of the basketball game. Other guys in and out of the game. Poling had some uh, chances to get a few threes off, but not many against uh, uh, Corso's defense. So I really felt bad for Perry. They couldn't play with their full complement of guys for the whole night, but the Bearcats played well. It sets up a very interesting matchup when they play Marion Local on Friday night because I think we'll see two very good defensive teams, a little bit more size with Marion Local, but a lot more, a little more quickness, a little bit more speed on the perimeter, and better shooting perhaps on the perimeter from Spencerville. That's an interesting matchup. Really interesting matchup. Yep. Regional spot in the regionals yep. on the line between Spencerville and Marion Local. So let's take a look at a couple of plays. We're going to go back to uh, the game against with Perry and New Knoxville first and watch what Perry does offensively and just break this down for us, Mark. Well, this is one of the key things that Perry likes to do, and they like to use Jacoby Lane Harvey as he comes off a curl cut. So he passes the ball back out to Gardner. Here's one screen, curls off the second screen, steps in the lane, and there's his jump shot. So it's all well done and well timed. If we have a chance to look at it right here, 
Here's, Garden, or here's uh, Jacoby Lane Harvey. He gets one screen, two screens. Here's the curl cut. The pass is on time to him, and he nails the shot as he comes through this. One good screen. You can see the second screen from Neal. He moves just enough to set up a little bit better screening angle. The defender follows him through the lane and a short jumper. Jacoby Lane Harvey kind of gets overshadowed among the good guards in the area. He is one of them. Here's a, a last second shot of the half for the New Knoxville Rangers. And the key to this is the, how the whole play is set up and how well they have a de uh, design. He's going to dribble over here. This guy steps into the lane and comes up. Here's supposed to be a screen, but he slips the screen. And Leffel goes to the basket, and Arnett realizes it and makes the perfect pass right on time. This is the last play of the first half for the Rangers, and there's that cut into the lane. You can see the defenders went one direction, and that was a good basket inside for the Rangers. Nice way to end the half there. Now let's jump ahead to last night's game, Marion Local, New Bremen. Yeah, this is the, the Flyers have the basketball, and using their twin towers inside, they go cross-court on the nice pass from Rethman inside to the 6'10", Kanapke, and you can see how Bruns reacts to that. But the key to this is the pass right here goes cross court, and then the strength to go right through Britain. Britain's only about 6'3", so obviously some size advantage into power up. And then, if we, I'm going to stop this right here, because if you have not seen this dunk by Carson Monger, we need to kind of set this tone on this. Where there's four minutes left, in the four and a half minutes left in the third quarter, and Monger has not scored yet. Now, he's played everything. He's played he's all, he was all over the floor, doing everything he can to get points. He's played defense. He's getting steals. But he hasn't scored yet. His team's down, and he is going to turn his, this play on right here and excite himself and his teammates, and he goes up and dunks on uh, Bruns. And we're going to get a couple different looks at it. First of all, we, as he comes off this screen, you can see right here the power. He goes, he's only listed at 6'3", two-handed dunk and the foul, and then the baseline shot's even better. Um, I'm trying not to be a fan at this point. I, I think a lot of people came out of the seats. You look up in the crowd up here, even the Marion local fans up here go, wow, that look at that. Play. The, whole, the whole place just was in a buzz because of that dunk right there by Monger. And unfortunately, uh, and if you look at what he did after that, there's, there's four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Over the last 12 and a half minutes, he scores 21 points. His team loses by three, but he was outstanding. It just goes to show you that wow. momentum is still such an important part of the game. And at the high school level, those type of plays, dunking the ball like that yeah. really can change the entire course of a game. And if you know what we don't have is the play that comes right after this. Uh, Bruns goes down at the other end. He powers one up and scores at the other game. It's kind of like this is game on when this particular thing happened right here. It was really an impressive play. Yeah, great response by yeah. Marion Local. They hold on for the win. And like we said, they will meet Spencerville. Let's go to the girls now because a lot of interesting okay. stuff happened on the girls. Hope we can cover it all for you here <laughs> as quickly as we can. De Bath back into the regionals in Division yep. Two, but they fell to a familiar foe in Toledo Rogers third straight year they've lost at this regional semifinal. Saw their game with Wapak the previous week on Saturday night. They really, Wapak really competed with them. I was really impressed with Maddie Styles how she played point guard for, for Wapak. But you're right, the, the Wild Kittens come up against the Rogers team with five girls going Division One, three to Michigan, one to Xavier, one to UC. What can you say? Wildcats didn't shoot it well enough to win the basketball game. They were going to have to make some shots from the perimeter against length. Maddie Dacken with 22 of her team's 41 points. She had a great career there and off to Ashland now. Yeah, they, Bath was in it. I mean, yeah, they, they were won. in it. Third quarter yeah. run for Rodgers kind of helped them pull away, but great effort by the Wild Kittens. Now, Versailles and Anna are going to play at Springfield, yep. and Versailles coming off a really dominant performance against Georgetown. A 66-27 win. Started this game on a 14-0 run, though. I was kind of looking through the, all the Versailles scores. In the tournament, they've outscored their opponents 71.8 to 26. Wow. I mean, they're just on a roll defensively and offensively, and Obviously, things are going to get more challenging as they go through the, the tournament now, but uh, they're certainly on a roll right now. Anna's on a good run as well, coming yep. off their win over Cincinnati Madeira. OG is into the regional yep. semis for the first time in school history. This is a group of girls that a lot of them played on the soccer team that made it to the state for the first time in school history, and now they're, they're setting records in, on, and, in basketball. And good for them. You know, when we look at what they did with Archibald uh, last night in that game, Archibald's quarter scores, five, two, seven, and six. And Great not, defense. They yeah, always have. Just yeah. tremendous defense. When your leading score has five points, which yeah. that's Cassidy Williams for Archibald, you know you're going to struggle. But turn the ball over more than 30 times with that great defense that OG played against them, got out in transition, scored enough baskets to win. Very solid effort for Coach Yant's team. And we have to mention that they defeated the previously unbeaten Liberty yep. Benton in a great in a great district final at Elida. That was a great game, wasn't it? And we talked a little bit about how that might occur and how they things could play out for them with the size and the perimeter scoring game and so on. It played out that way for uh, OG. Huge game for Daniel Schrader in that yep. one, 18 points. How about D4 now? And speaking of entertaining districts, I'm a senior. Yep. Ottoville 
won the district title. They'll face New Regal at Elida on Thursday. But the Lady Green defeated Collida by two after handing Crestview yep. its first loss. All the games in this district were decided by two points or fewer. Yeah, how about that? And, you know, we talked about could Ottoville pull an upset through this thing. They're now 18-7. and seven. They've got the good coaching staff, and they've been through all this before. Coach Klayman knows how to play this through, and obviously good coaching plays out. They make enough free throws to win basketball games that were very close. Exciting time for Ottoville, and that's what makes this time of year so great. Team yep. on a run. We'll see how far they can take it. Meanwhile, elsewhere in D4, Marion Local, they'll have faced Felicity Franklin tonight, I believe that right. game is, Fort Laramie against Rushi tomorrow on Thursday. At 8 o'clock tomorrow night, Thursday. And, and Matt, we're to the point now where you're going to run into quality competition every night. You know, you, a lot of times we talk about the Southern teams that they play, the top seeds choose to play, and they don't take buys, and we get some blowouts early. Uh, we're going to get to the point now where you're going to play quality competition each time out. And this, of course, we're talking about uh, we have Fort Laramie and Rushi, two teams that play each other out of their own conference. Right, that's a good one. Yep. And, the and for the Lady Flyers, Allie Toby coming off a huge game. You know, it was hard to imagine. I remember Allie Toby when she was this little, tiny freshman girl after just running all over, making all kinds of plays, and how well her game has developed over the years. It's really nice to see how people graduate as their, their skills improve. All right, huge game for her against yep. USV. All right, so that covers the boys and the girls. And as always, there will be a lot more to talk about when we get back together on next Wednesday. Yep. But in the meantime, we've got you covered with lots of high school basketball. Let's run through our broadcast schedule and get started tonight on Wednesday, 7.30. You can catch Delta St. John's versus Lipsick, district semifinal from Elida. And then immediately following that will be Columbus Grove versus Miller City. Thursday at 7, Elida versus Salina, District Semi from Liberty Benton. Thursday at 8.30, Wapak versus St. Mary's, the other district, district semi up at Liberty Benton. Thursday at 10, Coldwater versus LCC, District Semifinal at ONU. And that game will be immediately followed up by Liberty Benton at St. Henry, versus St. Henry, I should say, at ONU. Friday, we've got three games for you. Begins with Finley versus Lima Senior at Liberty Benton at 9 p.m. Mark Sean will be on the call for that one. Friday at 10.30 on WTLW, Division Four District Final at Wapak. That will be Spencerville against Marion Local. Friday at 10.30, Division Four District Final at Elida, Adelphi St. John's versus Columbus Grove. And two more games for you on Saturday, 10.30 p.m., WTLW. That'll be the D2 District Final at LB. Winners of Elida, Salina, and Wapak St. Mary's will meet. Saturday at 10.30 on WOSN, the D3 District Final at ONU. Coldwater LCC winner against the Liberty Benton. St. Henry winner. Lots of basketball, 13 games for you total on the week. We'll be at that number or around that number next week as well as we hit regionals. Love this time of year. Thank you for joining yep. us, Mark, and uh, looking forward to seeing who ends up where when we meet again next week.